So in this video, I am going to be demonstrating a needle felted steak. This is really to accompany my most recent pattern, the Melby yoke, where I have used this method for cutting up the front of the cardigan. So I just really want to show what you're aiming for when you do a needle felted steak, how much needle felting you want to do and what you want the wrong side to look like. So I just have this little swatch here. Obviously, if you are knitting the Melby cardigan, you'll actually be cutting up the center where there will be steak stitches, which will look a little bit more like the outside edge of this swatch here. There'll be vertical columns that you'll be cutting. So with the needle felted steak, you do need um, a multi needle felting tool and then some kind of mat um, that goes with it. So um, I ordered this as a kit. It's a clover um, needle felting tool. And you place the work on top of the mat with the right side facing you. And if you had a column of steak stitches here, so in the Melby yoke, there's a seven steak stitch, you would be aiming to move your needle felting tool up the center where you'll be cutting and, you know, trying to needle felt at least the stitch either side of that center stitch as well, but obviously not going into um, any area of the pattern that is actually going to be worn and isn't part of the steak there. And with this method, so I've just zoomed out a little further here for this portion. So I'm aiming, as I said, to go up the center here and I'm just moving the needle felting tool up and down, going all the way to the very edge because we'll be cutting the cast on edge and the bind off edge as well. So just move it up and down several times and then you can pause, turn it over and look at how much fuzz is being created on the back there. So you just want like a fairly nice level of um, fuzz there. Um, you don't want to overdo it because you'll tighten up the stitches either side. You'll pull them in if you really aggressively overdo the needle felting. Um, but you know, it's, it's fairly foolproof. Um, you can't, you won't really go too wrong with that. And the reason, the reason that I'm using it in the Melby yoke is that there's a good portion of the cardigan that is just in the main color. So there's not fair isle, um, stranded work happening over the steak. And so it just gives it a little bit um, more reinforcement there before I cut. Although probably with it being Shetland wool, um, you could still cut without reinforcement, um, even over just a plain section of knitting. But this is just a quick way to add in a little bit more reinforcement before you go ahead and cut. So again, just showing you the level of fuzziness you're looking for on the back there and then that's pretty much it you would go ahead and and cut so I'm aiming for the middle of this motif here but again if you're working from the pattern you will have steak stitches that you will be cutting through instead So just came close in again, so you can see cutting up through the center line of this pattern motif.
and there we go. So you can see just at the very outside edges here where we have that fuzziness, um, that that's just kind of, you know, a little extra reinforcement to hold those stitches in place.